Collective Mind goes to work now on BBC Two. Imagination runs wild. I see. How do I feel? I feel wounded, crushed, betrayed, deeply embittered, ground under the boot heels of uncaring commercialism. Oh, my God. Unappreciated, <laughs> alone, rejected. Goodbye. That was the inventions office, Dirk. Oh, yeah. Good news, Norm. <laughs> Hardly. I just turned down my latest invention. What? Your heated toilet paper? Outrageous, <laughs> Norm. That's what I said. Say goodbye to cold bottom misery, I said, but would they listen? <laughs> they never listen, Norm. What was their objection this time? Too seasonal. They said it would only sell in the winter. Narrow minds, Norman. They don't see the potential. You could do a summer version, kill toilet paper. That's what I said, Dirk. But they didn't like that either. In fact, their reply was very hurtful. What was that then, Norm? They said I should take my toilet paper, stick it in my gob, because obviously I was suffering from... Yeah? Verbal diarrhoea. Isn't that an awful thing to say, Dirk? Well, I'm choked, Norm. Tears and tears, I kid you not. Can you imagine how I feel? I feel like sitting down and writing a letter right now and telling them exactly what I think of them. Oh, don't do it, Norm. Remember, silence is golden. Let's try and keep your dignity. Yes, you're right, Dirk. I mean, it's not as if I've never had rejections before, is it? I've had dozens of them. Hundreds more, like. Maybe even thousands, Norm. OK, OK. But you're right. I shall remain dignified and aloof, untouchable, calm and detached. But before that, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to write a letter, and I'm going to tell them exactly what I think of them. Norm! Norm, come back! Oh, all this fuss over a bit of toilet paper. What is toilet paper, anyway? <laughs> well, over on Radio 4, Dr. Jonathan Miller continues his investigation into the link between brain disorders and comedy in Behind the Fringe. While here on Radio 2, Jimmy Young interviews one of Britain's most famous inventors, Sir Timothy Pizzlington. So let's join Jim. Let's not. What was that, Bingley? It was a radio, sir. You were on. I turned you off. Lots of people turn me off, Bingley. Don't take it personally. Turn myself off, truth be known. Here I am, the most famous inventor in Britain. One of the most famous, sir. What? It said you were one of the most famous inventors. On the radio, I mean. Did you like driving minicabs, Bingley? No, sir. Sorry, sir. Here I am, the most famous inventor in Britain, Bingley. And I haven't had an inventive thought for 20 years. What do you say to that? Well, look on the bright side, sir. It's not everyone who's asked to present the awards at the Inventor of the Year ceremony. Yeah. All those eager, thrusting young talents out there, desperate to overtake me, it's so depressing. If you say so, sir. I just have been. Talking of desperation, why did you give up driving minicabs? I got fed up driving drunks around. <laughs> Nearly there, sir. That's it. I've had enough. A person can only take so much in life before they start to fight back. Or go loony. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? I don't know. Give us a clue. Yeah. What are you? Animal, vegetable or mineral? <laughs> Warn you. <laughs> I'll be back, don't worry. No danger. Flowers are only brave when they're in a bunch. <laughs> Hello, Roger. Hello, Norman. Waiting for a bus? Not just a bus, Norman. My bus. 
If I took just any bus, I might end up far from my intended destination. And that would be undesirable. Do you see my point? It's hard to miss it, Roger. Bye. Bye, Norman. I seem to attract people like him. Oh, well, this is it. One small step for man, one giant leap for nor mankind. <laughs> what do you think you're doing with that? I was going to post it. <laughs> oh, no, you don't, bloody cheek. How do you like it if people went around sticking letters through your gob? Well, I wouldn't, but then I'm not a pillar box. <laughs> now then, don't get boxist. Sorry. So tell me, what's in this letter of yours anyway? Well, it's personal. I don't think I should tell you. Give us it here. Hold it up. I want to read it. Nearer to me collection times. This isn't an eye test. Dear, dear. Sorry. I should think so. Now, let's see. Dear sir, further to our blah, 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 swine, blah, 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 pillock. Uh, no, no, I'm not having this. What do you mean? This is bilious. I know it is. I was angry when I wrote it. I can't swallow a bilious letter. Why not? I'll get indigestion. Now, take it away and do it again. I will not do it again. What's wrong with this country? Suddenly, everyone's a critic. I will not be dictated to by a pillar box. Hey, cut that out! No, I won't! I, 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 I won't stop it! No, I, I won't! Hey, you, Clock Norman, still crazy after all these years, eh? <laughs> Bloody hell! I oh, know, he's sad, really. No, not him! That thing there! Here, grab this, Hume. What are you doing? Well, if I can't afford to buy one, I might as well get knocked down by one. Oh, come here, you fool. <laughs> Honestly, Darren, I don't know what gets into you sometimes. It's called envy, Hume. Bastard! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good old British envy, Bingley. Where would this country be without it? Don't you ever get envious, Sir Timothy? Me? Who could I possibly envy? I have position, well sit. Stop the car, over there by the pillar box. <sighs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't be taking it out on you. You just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Why are we bothering with him, sir? He's just a loony. Oh, yeah. You're the one in the monkey suit, sunshine. Fair point. I know you, don't I? And I know you. Sir Timothy Pitlington, the most famous inventor in Britain. You know that, Bingley? At school, we used to call you Smelly Pitlington. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That would be the um, formaldehyde. I was always conducting experiments. It wasn't that. The smell was on the inside. You were always a nasty piece of work. I'll vouch for that. Many cabs, Bingley, many cabs. At least I've made something with my life. I'm somewhat above the norm. Huh? I'm a success. I don't go around shouting at pillar boxes. I have to shout at it. I've tried talking, but it won't listen to reason. <laughs> You're always a bit on the loony side. The years haven't improved you any. No, they might have improved me if you hadn't stolen my best inventions from my desk. How dare you? That's an outrageous allegation. Inventing has been my life. I invented everything with a hole in it. The mint, the donut, your head. I don't suppose there's much call for slightly used chauffeurs with no references. All right, so maybe I haven't done very well in life. But I always had more imagination than you, even at school. You call me a loony for talking to the pillar box, but at least I can get it to talk back. It wouldn't say a word to you. Pillar boxes are fussy who they talk to. Isn't that right? <laughs> Obviously too fussy to talk to you. Oh, look, love it. I hate to see an old school chum down in his luck. Here, here's a couple of tickets for the inventor of the year award. I'm presenting the prizes. Why don't you come along, see how real inventors work? You could always uh, put in an entry for the best amateur prize. Always room for the hobbyist, you know. <laughs> well, don't forget, you can bring along a friend. Fill a box. Dry, Bingley. <laughs> I'm trying to, but there seems to be some sort of obstruction under the front tyres. <laughs> Ace wheels, Norman. Real touch of class. 
Oi! Oh, mate, you couldn't put a bit of tread across my T-shirt, could you? So I can impress the lads down the snooker club. Out! Mm. Come on, move yourself! All right, oh. You don't have to be mad to live here, but it helps. <laughs> <laughs> Some friends you were. Why didn't you say something? Why should I help you? Pillar boxes are fussy who they talk to. Patronizing bastard. <laughs> it's just no pleasing some objects. The award ceremony. I will enter an invention. I'll show them. I'll invent something that'll put them all to shame. They'll say, Norman, yes, it was our fault. We never realized he was ahead of his time. Sorry, Norman. You're too late. Next collection isn't till Monday. Cheerio. Mind you, I tend to agree with Einstein. Time is relative. That noise is most unequine. What is that demented fool doing? He's working on his latest invention. I hope it's a hearing aid. What? I said I hope it's... Oh, never mind. Subtlety is wasted on you anyway. It's a bloody disgrace, that noise. A bloody disgrace! Have a good mind to go next door and knock his block off. Oh, relax, Darren. It's not that bad. Not that bad? Look at the flaming budgie! <laughs> was in a good cause. That was improving the environment. This house will be a listed building by the time I finish with it, you. <laughs> if I live that long... It stopped. Oh, thank you. God. Yeah. If you'd been in a western, you'd have stampeded by now. Only if the stampede were in dressage style. Pleb. Who are you calling a pleb, <laughs> Trigger? How dare you? Stop arguing. Why should we? <laughs> I am a man of science and have decreed it thus. Bloody hell. <laughs> Did anyone order Kentucky Fried Chicken? <laughs> <laughs> What's all this in aid of, Norm? It's my latest invention, Dirk. I'll show those fools how wrong they were to turn me down. They're going to be sorry. Why? What are they going to do? Laugh themselves to death? <laughs> <laughs> I can't expect you to understand, Dirk. You're just a mere dog. As opposed to a battery hen. <laughs> <laughs> since time immemorial. Man has dreamed of growing wings and taking flight. Not around his own living room, surely. <laughs> yeah, be fair, Norm. You'd be doing a lot of budgies out of a job. <laughs> uh, go ahead, scoff. That's what I expected. Down through history, the greatest figures have all been laughed at in their time. Marconi, Leonardo. Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> <laughs> but the last laugh shall be mine. Take it from me. Icarus love it. This costume is aerodynamically designed to simulate bird movement and behavior to the letter. Nothing has been left to chance. It is accurate to the tiniest detail, as you shall find out tomorrow when I make my first solo flight. But now, if you'll excuse me, I have a busy day ahead of me and must get some sleep. Good night. Good night, Norm. I'll come up in a minute and pull the cover over your cage. Yeah. <laughs> Fool. Mind you, I will say one thing. He has indeed managed to simulate bird behavior to a remarkable degree. How do you mean? <coughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Looks like a job for the heated toilet paper. <laughs> Where are you going, Norm? Flying east for the winter. Yeah. Quiet, Dirk. I'm about to taxi for a takeoff. Diddly dum, diddly dum, diddly dum, da da. Hey, you about that bloody nut? Blimey. 
I didn't realise you were into cross-dressing, Mom. Why don't you pop round for a spritzer one night? Excuse me, I simply must fly. Fly? Not in that thing you want. Evolution doesn't happen in steps, Darren. It happens in sudden... <laughs> the public what they want. on top of things. How's the invention coming along? It'll be there. I'm working on it night and day. Oh, mustn't overdo it. Fancy a spot of lunch? Oh, thanks very much. I'll be right down. Oh, no need for that. I'll send it out. <laughs> Enjoy. Cheers, driver. Thanks for the tour. Oh well, back to the drawing board. Bus is here, Roger. Or you can fly if you like. Go on, you can get on. I would if I could, Dorwood, but I can't. I'm frozen stiff, waiting for it. Ow! Sometimes attracting people like him can be very inspiring. <laughs> Darren. He's still at it, Hume. He's determined. He won't give up. Well, to be fair, we don't hear half as much noise since he's moved to the shed. You need determination if you're to succeed in life, Hume. I suppose so. And talent, and charisma, and a fair degree of intelligence. Yes. I suppose that's why I never really made it. Oh? Well, I had so much of all three of them. I was too much of a threat, so they just had to stifle me. You know what I mean, love. <laughs> Think I'll uh, nip down and give him a few tips. Well, what is it then, Norm? Can't tell you, Darren. Not till it's ready. But I'll tell you this much. It'll be a boon to all mankind. Well, the ones that use public transport, anyway. It really means a lot to you, this inventing lark, doesn't it, Norm? Especially this one, Darren. This is my big chance to get even with smelly Pitlington. Why is it that you hate him so much, then? At school, he was the bane of my life. He bullied me, played tricks on me, stole my best ideas. And do you know why? He was jealous. Jealous? Of you? No offence, mate, but he must have been the world's worst underachiever. He was. Then one day came the moment that changed my life and his. It happened in church. I call it my Damascus Road experience. It was when the church was trying to get trendy. Boys and girls of Damascus Road Junior Secondary, do you feel all right? <laughs> Let me hear you say, yeah! Yeah, yeah! Yeah, yeah! yeah. You want to rock and roll? Yeah! Well, you can. <laughs> Let's pray instead. <laughs> Our Father, which art in heaven... I was always on the lookout for things to invent. Come, I got my inspiration from some very earth, unusual places. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our treasures. 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 Amen. 
I tried to apply religion to everyday life. It was a great idea, and it really caught on. But I had reckoned without smelly. father to take the idea to the patents office. It became the hula hoop and sold millions. He never looked back. And that's why I hate smelly Pitlington. Norm, you touch my heart, mate. If there's anything I can do, anything at all, you just name it. Well, now you come to mention it, Darren. I know I'm shameless. There is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Now we come to the most important part of this evening's proceedings, the presentation of the prestigious Inventor of the Year Award. The winner of this evening's award is dyslexic. Not only that, but she's green, a lesbian, and a single parent. <laughs> Thank you so much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, as you will be aware, over the past few years, physics has become boring and safe. Well, this young woman has put the danger back into nuclear fusion. Earlier this year, I saw her work a room full of molecular scientists in Wigan. And believe you me, if you can make the atoms fly with that lot, you know you've arrived. <laughs> so without further ado, I give to you the hottest thing in alternative toxic waste disposal. Ladies and gentlemen, the plutonium bombshell herself, Ms. Jenny Bruce. Why don't you get back to the kitchen, you grubby live mouse dyke? <laughs> Spin on it. Ground out. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful! Yes. Not only talented, but charming. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, we come to a very special award, the Amateur Inventor of the Year Award. This is it, Darren. My big chance to make a name for myself. And this award is very special this year because there's only been one entrant. And since there has been only one entrant, we've decided to cancel this award. So let's forget all about it and let's enjoy ourselves. Did you hear that, Norm? Cheeky bastard. He's not going to get away with that, Norm. Norm? Norm! Right. <laughs> hey, you! About this Amateur Inventors Award. Yes? What about it? Well, my mate Norman's been working his bot spherical objects off over this. <laughs> the least you could do is take a look at it. Yes, all right then. If I must, I must. Get it out. Not so fast. There's a whole speech to go through yet. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Since time immemorial, man has dreamt of two things. World peace and something to keep him warm while standing at the bus stop. Call me psychic, but I think we're in for number two. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, posh bastards. <laughs> I give you Norman's centrally heated bus stop! <laughs> Anybody seen the 15B? <laughs> Essentially, he did bus stop. <laughs> I haven't laughed so much since chilled toilet paper. 
<laughs> it was heated toilet paper, actually. Oh, you're still here, are you? I thought you'd be back at your day centre by now, weaving baskets. Well, cheerio, old chum. See you in another life. Bingley, this door block. Is it, sir? Oh, dear. Perhaps it's jammed again. Try sitting on the wing and moving up and down, sir. Let me help you. Right. This, is, this, is, this is outrageous. So undignified. Are you sitting comfortably, sir? No! Why? Lovely car you have, Sir Timothy. Automatic windows, automatic gears. Automatic aerial. Up scope, Bingley. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> Cheerio, Norman. Cheerio, Bingley. By the way, what is your first name? Do you know, I've quite forgotten, Norman. <laughs> Bingley, you rotten swine! I'll have you back touring the nightclubs in a circus and Sierra! Oh, really? Oh, well, in that case, I might as well enjoy myself, then. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> See ya! Bye. That was Sir Timothy Pithington. He invented everything with a hole in it. <laughs> Seems quite fitting in a way. <laughs> Bye.